Yo, Oregon is failing really hard. There are some policies in a video that I talked about recently. Not too sure when that one's coming out or whatever, if this one's going to be out before or after. Regardless, there are some policies that British Columbia has adopted specifically from Portland, Oregon in general, and passed through the Oregon legislature, mostly for the service of Portland, which is the same way that happens up here in Canada. BC passes something through their legislature in Victoria for service of Vancouver, biggest city in the province, in British Columbia's case, and for Oregon, Portland, and the state's case in the united states you understand that so they decided to pass their hard drugs decriminalization up north and in service they just decided to pass through the euthanasia policy hi yo yo oregon has become america's first death tourism destination with terminally ill people in states that outlaw assisted suicide starting to travel there to get a deadly cocktail of drugs or if they can't get the proper service at the hospital eh, they just go out on the street and then just live out the next couple of weeks of their lives in a blissful numbness Oregon has become America's first death tourism destination where terminally ill people from Texas and other states that have outlawed assisted suicide have started traveling to get their hands on a deadly cocktail of drugs to end their lives and where their whorish daughters can go just one state south and they can get anything scraped and sucked because the west coast is the worst coast undeniably. The liberal bastion Portland, at least one clinic, has started receiving out-of-staters with at least oh, with less than six months to live and meet other strict requirements of the state's death with dignity law. So if they have the ability to travel, are they really on death's doorstep? I'm just wondering, man. Dr. Nicholas Gideons, the director of Ended Parenthood, oh, I'm sorry, Life of or End of Life Choices, Oregon, recently told a panel that he was advising terminally ill non-residents on traveling to Oregon to end their lives despite a legal gray area. Dr. Gideonese, an advocate for the magic mushroom therapy. Oh, great! This is the person that you want to have assisting you in the choice to end your own life. Great, wonderful, fantastic. A hippie uh, said he was helping a Texan man suffering from Lou Gehrig's disease and a hospital patient on the east coast but added that they were not yet tons of people coming from all over well that's kind of good i understand wanting to yes pass with dignity there's another video that i did outlining the whole maid system up here in canada where it's yeah if there's absolutely nothing that can be done for you and you just want to pass before things get too excruciating i can understand that but what are the confines of this law because this creates a slippery slope where you have now in Canada where if you have a couple of consecutive days where you aren't quite feeling it, you can just fill out this handy checklist and don't worry, within 90 days, we'll just go ahead and deliver you to a nice pine box. I hate it. But for a small number of patients who otherwise qualify or are determined to go through that and who have the energy and the resources, it has started to happen, he said. Oh. Why would you trust anybody who's got one of those <laughs> little gay pictures? God, it's just terrible. Out-of-state residents may be able to spend at least 15 days in Oregon to process the paperwork, which requires sign-offs from two doctors, a witness uh, before administering the fatal dose themselves, says a clinic's website. So two weeks to let everything really sink in. Dr. Gideonese and the clinic operate in a legal gray zone. The state last year agreed to extend access to doctor-assisted suicide to out-of-staters. Doesn't that kind of somehow impact interstate commerce? Wouldn't this be a federal issue? But this is not expected to be codified into law until later this year. Yeah, um, that's interesting. But America's first death tourism destination throw up a tough legal question for family members who may help a loved one reach Oregon from a prohibitionist state. They're trying to color this as some sort of a good thing where at best it's a moral gray and at worst it's a defeatist attitude where you're just better off dead than alive. And I kind of hate this anti-human stance that so many things and so many places are taking. For critics, Oregon's nascent death tourism industry and efforts to create another in Vermont. Oh, great. So now it's spreading. That's terminal. Maybe you should just get rid of those two just heathen states. Show how the United States is on a slippery slope to following Canada's footsteps. Yes, of course, but not all of Oregon. I don't know about all of Vermont, but Vermont's kind of a weird state in and of itself. Like, no state income tax, but then you have a goofy cuck governor. It's, it's a strange place out in Vermont. But as for Oregon specifically, at least 
90% of the state isn't down with the way that the 1%, the little city that could, decides to control the destiny of the rest of it. And I talked about this well back in the day, back when it was just an initial thought process. But it seems like there's some process being made on this. So this is the Greater Idaho Project. And what's the Greater Idaho Project? More little breakaway portions of different states, Washington, Oregon, and California, to really be specific, wanting to join, or join Idaho because for generations, their political affiliations are better represented by Idaho as opposed to Portland and Seattle. Let's keep it a buck. Or people in Northern California having their politics, having their tax policies, having everything that they do micromanaged by San Francisco and Los Angeles. They would rather have their voice heard because it's just a few people. It's just a few people in Northern California. It's just a few people outside of Seattle in Washington, outside of Portland in Oregon. So they are disproportionately crushed under the foot of the big cities that's why statewide electoral college in these traditionally democratic states take a look at illinois the entire state is red minus chicago ergo it's a democrat state whereas the rest of the people in the rural outlying areas uh they're out in the cold when it comes to having their political voices heard and that's the that's the lovely part of democracy democracy two wolves and a sheep deciding what's for dinner so leaders of East Oregon bid to secede and join Idaho thinks movement could go nationwide with more rural countries looking to dump urban democratic leaders and woke havens like Portland to impose taxes on them and shun traditional values. No, man, you're not telling me that there aren't a bunch of farmers out there that just want to do a whole bunch of meth and let somebody else till their fields. Come on now. Come on. Leader of East Oregon's plan to leave liberal Portland behind and join conservative Idaho is moving fast. Mike McCarter has a $70,000 budget for lobbyists in two states, has seen allies introduce legislation in Oregon last month, and the bill is ready to go in Idaho that could accelerate discussion for 15 countries to jump the border. If it works, he has... Other, er, Oh, he says other red counties will have a model for how to dump their urban democratic rulers. God bless. I think people within the United States are watching Oregon's movement, hoping that they'll establish a pathway for them in the future. The leader of the Greater Idaho Movement runs a campaign from the cramped office in the cabin outside Lapine. Oregon? Sure. Uh, the walls are decorated with the head of musk, uh, musk deer and uh, muzzle-loading rifles. Oh, he's just a crazy right-wing lunatic. Or he understands that Portland isn't exactly representative of the rest of the state so everything that's in red have voted to join idaho oh green's on the way as well and some of the other oh some of the other counties just haven't held their referendums yet but yeah the last time we looked at this there was more from washington as well looking to hop over join idaho as well and some in northern california see if they get into that could not be further from the image of uh oregon as the haven for woke politics no you hear about how beautiful oregon is and the outlying areas all the time and just how the rural outskirts and the beautiful forests that are out there it's just bogged down by the terrible policy decisions that inhabit portland to just kind of paint the entire state in a bad light where the majority voted to decriminalize hard drugs in 2020 and that's done so well for them check out that video that i referenced earlier where coastal valleys provide a perfect climate for the delicate pinot noir grape and where the liberal lifestyle was set up in a uh, TV comedy Portlandia. That is Portland with homeless encampments outside artisan donut stores. Yeah, no, that that's Portland. By contrast, central and eastern Oregon is a land of hardy ranchers, loggers, and sawmill workers, where daytime temperatures drop below zero on the weekend after a snowstorm. Yes, that's all very, very true. And where locals say they have more in common with next door Idaho than they do with Portland, and it's six dollar cafe lattes. Six dollars? What are they on sale? Our movement is based Oh, on values, right, said McCarter, 75, a retired nursery worker who runs courses for people who want concealed carry permits, which are difficult to get in Oregon, which is kind of ridiculous because, again, that's all in service of Portland as opposed to the rest of the you know farmland that's out there because if you just take a look at a population map, it's one concentration, one concentration of people, and then the rest of it's just sparsely populated. Our move... Oh, and... Uh, 
Right. Anyways, uh, you know the traditional values of faith, family, freedom, and independence. We want to be catered to by the government. Oh, we don't want to be catered to by the government. And it's like, that seems contrary. I just need to learn how to read, I guess. In other words, if my power goes down, I have a generator, I have water, I have everything food storage included. As America divides between herbal, urban and rural, Democratic cities and Republican hiss and prairies, Eastern Oregon is at the forefront of reshaping state lines. Extra tax burdens on businesses, a softly, softly approach to crime and a swingening covid lockdowns i like to think that i have a fairly extensive vocabulary i've never heard swingening before anyways have all left oh people here feeling out of step with state leaders very much so you know those signs are just kind of what i'm used to seeing up here except for you just replace biden with trudeau and instead of move oregon's borders it's let alberta secede you know i swear i've definitely i know for a fact i've seen something painted on big old 24 inch 36 inch saw blade before like that's that's something that you're gonna see in between height and beaver lodge if you know you know and if you don't don't worry about it just take my word for it Fair representation, said McCarter, lays across the state border uh, border with Boise, rather than Oregon's state capital of Salem. Salem, Oregon, or Salem, Maine? No, it's Portland. Damn it. Uh, there remains a long shot. McCarter knows that Oregon is likely to give up 15 counties, 400,000 people, and about 63% of its land without a fight. Yeah, but if those counties want to move, hmm, sucks to suck, I guess. But so far, 11 eastern counties have voted in favor, or at least in favor, of legislation requiring the county to discuss moving. Last month, lawmakers in Oregon introduced a bill that would require the state to start talks with Idaho. A similar bill is ready to go in Idaho. Maybe a long job, but McCarter uh, said that there are benefits to the counties left behind. West Oregon, West Oregonians, he said, subsidize the east to a tune of about $500 person per year. It sounds like those redistribution payments that I laid out in canada as well where alberta alberta basically funds the rest of the country but we're the bad guys because my natural resource that they're killing the planet y'all democrats would likely also have a super majority in the legislature yeah giving them more leeway to pursue their agenda yeah their agenda of making the entire state look something like that where you can just have open air drug dens basically everywhere people passed out on cardboard sleeping on the street collecting a stipend or there's that other that is that is one gift that is never going to leave my mind where you got a homeless guy who's uh, just got his cheeks hanging over the side of a curb and he is just fire hosing diarrhea right into the trough and yo man if you guys have a hope like just check this out okay there's portland there's portland right there and then the rest of the counties the way that they vote ruby red at least a shade of red and to further drive that home joe biden won more than 56 percent of the vote even though 26 of oregon's 36 counties backed donald trump yeah well people aren't land and people vote not land yeah but those people that live in their land they want representation they don't want tyranny enforced over top of them so i wish them all the best of luck and especially if it sets a precedent where if you aren't being represented by your government you have a way out because the government the government is run by the people for the people not not the other way around it's not run to be enforced on the people and Government officials need to be made painfully aware of that. And if, hey, if it comes to losing just about half a million people and a whole bunch of land, then so be it. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.